Thank you for checking out the channel. Um, I think I should start doing a spiel. <laughs> so, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Do the notification bell thingy. Um, I hope to have lots more videos on tarot content. Um, and I'm working on bringing more to you, but right now I'm going to do a VR that I've wanted to do. Uh, that came out a little bit earlier this year, but wasn't able to do it at the time. And so I wanted to do it now, which is the Tarot Tribe tag. So there's a few questions here that we're going to test. It was started. So the Tarot Tribe tag was started by V Love and Crystals. Um, and there's been a bunch all over YouTube and some great, uh, and they're a lot of fun to watch. And just another kind of get to know your tarot tubers kind of deal. So, we'll go ahead and get started so I don't make this a horribly long video like the last few I've done. Well, hopefully the last one wasn't horrible. But I'm covered in fuzz. Um, because it was educational. I tried, I'm going to try to do more educational content. But anyway, so here we go. Um, first question, how did you get into tarot? Um, so, I don't know how old I was. I was in elementary school. And I want to say... It was after third grade. It might have been in third grade, uh, but I do remember that the school had been renovated and the library had been moved when I found that we had an occult section in our library and I then devoured it. Not, it wasn't huge, um, but I do remember that they'd renovated the school and added a new wing and a new gym and a new library and moved the library um, from where we saw the Challenger disaster. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, I knew it was in the new library. I do remember that. But I don't remember exactly how old I was. I was definitely 9 or 10, maybe. Um, but I found a book. And this book was, interestingly enough, what I remember about this book is there was a journalist going around to different pagan things and trying them out. And one of them was crystal balls. Another was tarot. And just different divination methods. And that is where I really um, think I first heard about it. And between the late 70s, early 80s, uh, kind of progressive music and um, art and animation that I was exposed to due to different relatives, um, I was definitely on the hunt with it. A, a relative gifted me my first tarot deck when I was 12. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. So, um, but I was definitely on the hunt. I had this idea in my head of what I thought the, the tarot was, which was not probably correct. It was definitely more fantastical as a little kid. Um, but that... Um, I went and bought some books. My first two books was Eden Gray and um, Emily Peach. The Eden Gray book I don't think I have anymore because um, I remember tearing it to pieces and not because of any thing. I actually tore the pieces and put it back together again in a notebook to use as I was learning tarot because um, that's the kind of kid I was, I'd go get the book. So I tore it to pieces and re-put it back together to help me easier, to make it easier for me to learn. Um, but I went through the Emily Peach book, which is still on my shelf to this day, because more so than the Eden Grey book, that book really cemented my love for tarot. Um, tarot or Oracle and why? Uh, so, tarot. And I think it's because tarot is a system. It's a system with history, which is not always the history you expect. The It's also just rich in symbolism and everything else. And it's not that Oracle isn't. It's just that anything can be an Oracle. I mean, really. Any, I mean, look at the variety. And honestly, even though I do buy Oracle decks from time to time, not as much as I once did, and I don't, I just don't use them as much. Um, I tend to use them as kind of like a daily pool. 
not so much error. I like things with systems. Um, I'm trying to actually learn the I Ching now. <laughs> but again, that's something with a system. And I like that. Or the Lenormand. It's a, it, it has a system. And I, I like that. That really appeals to me. Um, and I, it doesn't matter that there's different systems. It just matters that there's one. And I love the history and the the metaphysics and just all the different details that people applied to tarot over the years. Sorry, we can hear that my pugs are a bit grumbly right now. Okay, so if you could create your own deck, would you? So um, I've had a few ideas over the years, but nothing has come to full fruition. The biggest one that I worked on was a Greek mythology deck because at the time there was the mythic tarot and the tarot of the Olympians. I think that's what it was called from Los Garibaldi. Um And that was it. There wasn't really any other Greek mythology decks. And I didn't feel that they lined up well with the actual mythology and, and the meanings of the tarot. And I thought that they could. And I had this epiphany in a tarot class I was taking at the time. Way back. <laughs> and I... And so I sat down with Robert Graves and a few other mythology texts and basically throughout an entire summer during my lunch breaks at work, I took, there's actually this book that was published, I think it was in the 80s, maybe late 90s that I got a hold of and I didn't write in the book, but it's all about making your own tarot deck and it's a page by page thing, but I literally have in there tucked in notes in every single page that I, because I wrote it out on a, a sheet of paper or a bookmark sized piece of paper, um, all my ideas for each and every single card in the deck. And I laid it all out and I did it. And I did not and do not have the artistic talent to make it look how I would want to look. And the idea just kind of fell off. Um, so there's always that. I'm not, and I've been thinking lately that I might pull all that research together, digitize it, and put it up. And just have it available for folks to peruse and, and see. Because it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I've had lots of ideas for decks over the years. Um, but I don't really know what I would put out there at this point. Uh... Let's see, show us your first deck. So I do have my first deck, my original, my Hanson Roberts, of course. You've probably seen this in other videos that I've done. I mean, the page has some like pink marker, I think, on it or something. Uh, yeah, I don't have the box anymore. It fell apart, but here are my cards. Um, this is probably the only deck I've ever, well, no, I did do this to lend a deck too. Rifle shuffled, but this is back when tarot cards didn't have a standard size, so they're about playing card size, which I love, and I actually kind of wish more tarot decks were playing card size. Um, and just yeah, I love the images. I am not a fan of the straight rider weight, um, though I do have several rider weight decks now. Um, I didn't start there because I didn't like the art. I'm still not the biggest fan of Hamlet Columbus's art. I'm sorry, but. Um, I do actually have one Rider Waite that I actually will read with, and it's the Radiant Wise Smith now. But this, I used to sit in high in high school. I would sit in the halls during lunch and play solitaire with this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I've always loved these. I've loved this in my. In my little kid dream and I the person who gave me this deck I'm forever grateful for like reading my mind this is what I pictured tarot being as a little kid not really knowing only I've heard of it from a book with just some blurry photographs in it <laughs> black and white photographs um, but yeah so I love this deck so much I love the the color pencils and that you can see the color pencil lines and yeah I love it it has its own little box that I keep it in um it's a little bag I have a little organdy bag for it it's, and I and I always have it about because I still use it from time to time um 
my most recent decks. So I actually had two decks delivered today. So this is fun. Um, I don't know if I actually said this too much, but I am really into death imagery um, and mythology as well as death burial practices. And it's one of the things I studied quite a bit in college. Oh, I did a whole like semester on washing of the bones and different cultures that why oh anyway so it completely fascinates me and i like to collect decks and i heard about the ghost tarot which i hadn't heard about before and somebody told me it was out of print but it wasn't i was able to get it pretty easily um so the ghost tarot this one i don't know i can't decide on this the the artwork's kind of stiff and it's mostly just ghostly figures replacing or in addition to Rider Waite Smith, so I had juries out on this one. It's not so much death imagery as just some ghostly figures, which is okay. Nah. But, and then the Tarot I am not a big fan of zombies. In fact, I really don't like most zombie things. Um, not a fan of The Walking Dead. But there's some that I liked. I actually did like World War Z. I liked Girl with All the Gifts. Um, so, you know, there are ones that I like, don't talk to me about Ro you know, the Romeo, Juliet one, that one just, uh, no, but having said that and giving you that nice visual, um, the reason why I bought this deck is, and the light might not be good enough, I need like a four light, sorry, I kind of positioned myself in between the windows because last time there, I know there was a big uh, the big light over here. I don't know. I might need to move to my bedroom, but even then there's a big window. Like every wall has a giant window. So <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to play with it more, but I don't know if you can see this, but just that, this picture here, if you've not listened to, I really love Bastille and their song, The Remains. Um, just that idea that even in death, and that's a very powerful image for me. And I actually kind of like how these cards are depicted and they're not all, it is very post-apocalyptic in this, not just zombies, um, which eh, I don't know, but I, it's so, I, it was something I like. It was interesting. And it comes with an interesting spread, which I can't wait to try. Uh, it says, and crystal. So actually that's this crystal and I don't know how well you can see it. Maybe if I, uh, nah, that doesn't help anybody. Um, but we'll put it up there. It's, uh, quartz. It came in my last, uh, tarot box from Awakening in a Box, which overall, like I said, I haven't been very happy with. Last couple decks, uh, I got one that was interesting, and then I got one that I purchased, like, over ten years ago for my daughter, um, which is not a deck that I ever wanted, and my daughter still has her deck. And everything so I'm like looking at this going uh, I don't know I'm we'll see what happens they've been having some difficulties because of COVID but I still have five months so we'll give it a see what happens <laughs> um my next box is should, my next box should be coming next week I think sometime but we'll see um but they do give the things that they give with the tarot have been the best part of the boxes again that's also been a little weak because they have been able to get the stuff that they've meant to put in boxes and that's been true for a few of the boxes that i belong to which is kind of sad but i can't fault them you know people not everybody is open for their shop right now and it's not or not able to supply the things they might have but they did pick a selection of crystals and gave people different ones this is supposed to be a tangerine quartz it's not um it's actually uh, very rutilated inside, and it gives it it gives it off like it's silver. I don't know, you can't see, but it is actually very transparent. Yeah, this makes it look translucent, so it looks like a piece of quartz you might find in the driveway. But no, it's actually very tran transparent and has a very silvery sheen. And I don't have any quartz like this. I actually really like this. This is one of the really nice things I got. In the random box so I did appreciate that um, let's see first timer tip a tip I would give to first timers 
Um, I am planning to put a bunch of Tarot 101 videos together. Um, and hopefully, if people are interested, be able to teach a class here when things open up, if that's a possibility. But for first timers, the tip I would give you, and this I got originally from the Arthurian Tarot, the Holoquest, but I've applied it to every deck since that I have spent actual time with, and it is really nice. So take your deck, and I'll use my Hanson Robert. So get to know your deck, and I don't mean a deck interview. Spend some time not reading with the deck, but separate it out into courts, minors, and majors. Three piles. And every day, pick one card from each. Consider this your lesson for today. So um, I have the knight the Four of Rods, and the Hierophant. This is today's lesson. Look up the meanings in whatever book it came with, whether it was a little white book or a large book. If it doesn't come with a book, then do your best to, to understand the meanings yourself or use something, you know, if, if you feel that you're, you know the meanings enough of a system, Rider Waite, Goth, what have you, whatever the deck might be emulating. Um, the biggest example I can think of this is the uh, Dark Man Tarot doesn't come with a book. Um, so it doesn't come with a book. I might use the pictorial key or uh, just look at the cards and go over the meanings. Journal about your lesson today after you've read the meanings for each of these. This will help you get to know the cards. Um, if you want to make sure you get every card and not just picking a random one, don't shuffle, but slip today's card on the bottom of the deck and just keep going. You'll go through the core cards, of course, way faster than the others, and you can stop or just keep going. Um, but really, it's a great way to get to know new decks. So that, it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, first tarot tuber I followed uh, was actually Arwen Lynch um, and the reason why I followed her was not because of tarot tube I followed her because she was one of the first pagans to welcome me to the pagan community in Denver more than almost 20 years ago it's actually almost 20 not more than um, I was a young mother um, all by my own single by myself and I was forced to move away because I couldn't afford where I had been living before I got divorced. I was forced to move to Denver. And so, and she just really welcomed me into the community and everything. So when I had that shared the YouTube channel, I totally started following it. And so I've been following ever since. She probably doesn't remember me at all. Um, but she really did a lot to welcome me to Denver and the tarot community. And I really appreciate that. So yeah, that's the first one I started following. And she doesn't post a lot of videos anymore, but I still like looking when she does post. Um, let's see. Uh, life Before Tarot. I don't remember a Life Before Tarot. Like I said, I was really young when I first discovered it. And in my mind, I made up stuff about it before I knew about it. So I was always thinking about divination and tarot and I was a little pagan. Oh, and I was going to show you this. And I found, I pulled out this box, which was my first grade pencil box. I posted on Instagram. Um, but I decided to put it up on one of the shelves that I hung this weekend for some of my little knickknacks because I love it. Um, this is my pencil box. It's kind of fragile. But this is what a little witch I was in first grade. This has a protection spell on it for me, for you to use. Uh, protection against bad things. Mountain ash or rowan, daisy or the clover. Keep these with you at all times. Simple little protection spell. It also has a curse for people who mess with the box. Trespassers will get warts. A lot of mumbo jumbo. Keep out, this box is protected by a lot of mumbo jumbo, belongs to Michelle N. Trespassers will get warts. It has all kinds of little creatures on it. It talks about troll witches 
and how some are good and some are evil. Why you should be kind to of toads and not squash them. You know, pixies, how you should be careful about pixies. Uh, goblins are ugly creatures. And what else? And gnomes and dwarves. Or leprechauns, not gnomes. Leprechauns. There is a gnome somewhere, I think, on here. He's a little fella. An enchanted ant. But yeah, so um, I was checking out all kinds of books on witchcraft. <laughs> yeah, and we even... I mean, I remember in middle school sitting with friends and talking, yeah, and we had a group, actually in high school, we had our friend, we had one girl who was a Jehovah Witness, me, other Seventh-day Adventist, evangelical, and we used to sit around a table at lunchtime and talk about religion, and it was fabulous. Honestly, those women were amazing, and I hope that they had good lives, because I don't know what happened to them, I haven't ever seen them again. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I was always that pagan witchy girl all forever, and there was no time before. My dad had pagan books all up in the thing, and he was done with it, but I devoured them, and now I, I have all of them, so, <laughs> um, because he gave them to me when they moved. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's never not been a thing for me honestly. So I don't know any other life. I don't have the background of, I mean, I, I didn't grow up in an evangelical household or a Christian household. So, um, I think my mom said something to me like once when I was a teenager and I was old enough to be like, ah, eh, nah, I think because she came I don't know. It's it's been a very different life for me. So there was never a time before. Um, let's see. Uh, we're more than halfway through it. My favorite spread. So I don't use spreads. I do use spreads. I do try spreads out and I'll use them from time to time. But my go-to reading style is spreadless. So it's more, I kind of, it's kind of like a pyramid. I stack cards on top of each other and kind of weave a web of a story when I do a reading. And you have to say one, I am fascinated with the Celtic cross. And I know there's a lot of people who don't like it. And it's just, you know, it's a way it's made up spread. But I'm fascinated by how many variations there are and how far it gets used. It's, it's not as much of a trend as it used to be, but that used to be there had to be a Celtic cross in every book. And that's not true anymore, but definitely um, it's always interesting when it comes up. And I've actually started cataloging all the ones I know about, and I have yet, there's only been one instance of it being the same. There's a little difference in every single one, and that's actually really fascinating for me. So if I have to pick a favorite spread, I would say that one. Though, using it for readings, I don't generally do. Um, most anticipated deck. Oh, wow. So I'm really looking forward to the Heaven and Earth Tarot uh, from Los Scarbeo. I have um, the Dark Wood Tarot should be coming in a couple weeks. I can't wait. Um, the uh, Nameless Tarot and Oracle. I back that and, you know, maybe in December, hope. Uh, oh, God, there's been a couple. The Sabbath Tarot should be coming soon. I really wanted the Goetia in Darkness, um, but I just missed the kiss Kickstarter, so I have to wait for Luan to put it out. I think it's Luan, or is it Luan? No, it's no Scarabelle. Oh, and the Noestra. So the same artist, he did the... Um, Oh my gosh, the deck with the skulls, the one, the Santa Morta, uh, Santa Morta tarot, the Night Sun tarot. He did, and he did Goetia and Darkness. He has a new one starting in a day or two, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I really do enjoy his art. Um, yeah. What else? Um, can't remember there's another one by a landscape artist that I backed and I can't remember it at the moment uh oracle wise I am looking forward to an oracle deck the crystallarium um 
person did the herbary and the uh, bestiary uh, just because I don't know I really like that the little book with the little deck in the back I'm not a my where people are sharing their unpopular tarot thoughts right now and mine is I don't actually care about the card stock I love good card stock I love when pretty things are added to it but honestly what I care about is the tarot like the the picture on the card and so if it has borders I'm usually fine with it and I'm only modding decks that are already destroyed for some reason or another <laughs> so I don't generally mod decks and I try to have a copy of a deck that's not modded if I can so um tarot wish list that's kind of also my tarot wish list oh I also have the secret tarot on it I'd really like a copy of that but I haven't bought it yet and I kind of want the before and after tarots um, we did a really great exercise with a uh, tarot meetup in Denver mm -hmm. just before I left where we did this before and after reading and actually I really liked that I didn't like the vice versa as much um, but before and after I'd like to get uh, impressions and fears of tarot I just thought it was this wonderful magical thing and I that's never changed I haven't had a fear of tarot I'm not afraid of demons or the occult so I'm not afraid to go now it's never been a problem for me uh, have you started reading or what stopped you so um, I read I've read professionally let's say I did for about 10 years and then for various reasons my life fell apart and I had to step away from it so well no I guess I had to be more than 10 years sorry I have to think this through I was probably about 13 years actually and then I had to step away and then in the last year um, getting back into everything and then having to move but I'm hoping being to set out my shingle again soon so yeah uh, life got in the way and I basically had to struggle to make it and to make sure that my daughter um, could get the education she needed so that took precedent precedence for quite a while unfortunately uh, well or fortunate for her because yeah child comes first right and I love her to death so yeah and plus being sick and things like that there was a lot of time I had to step away that didn't stop my love for tarot I still read tarot and studied um, and read for myself um, but I did have to take a step back so I'm hoping to change that that was one of my goals for 2020 <laughs> and things are conspiring but we'll see what we can do um, I have officially started the tarot meetup so hopefully soon we can have our first meeting if not in person then online we'll see how that goes and for those of you who has joined us, it's giving me a disappointing look. Let's see, uh, two more questions left. Have you gotten a reading? Of course I have. Um, I've gotten lots of readings, both ones I've paid for or have been given in kind. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's valuable to have your cards read for you as well and see how that's, you know, and how that's doing. For you and what's going on um, I believe the cards show you a picture of what you are they're a mirror that you're looking at and let you look at an issue or a problem from other angles um, so I think it's very valuable and I have had it done of course I would say that but I think it's true let's see last question what vibes do you like to get vibe uh, I don't know um, I want to feel comfortable with the person I'm either reading for or is reading me, reading for me. Um, I've had my cards read by a person who I was not comfortable with and that was a scary experience. Um, it's not so much vibes. It's more, I'd like people to be engaged and I hope that they can be engaged in the reading and ask questions or, um, talk about what they want to talk about. I, I don't like it when people just sit there stone face, but it happens and you have to work through it. Um, so it's not really vibes. It's just, I like people to be engaged. 
I think everybody wants that. Well, that's it. That's the last of the questions. A short one today. I am no longer on I have no idea how long I've gone. I hope it wasn't too long. Um, I don't think it was. But um, thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, the last one is tagging people. Um, I don't feel like I know people enough to tag them. <laughs> um, so I tag anyone who watches this. Please do this too if you haven't already. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful night, everyone.